The greatest misconception about Metallica is that we're hmm. very talented. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that we're intelligent? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> that we're heavy metal? Yeah. No. Um, that we are, we're, we mean uh, well? That we're still young? <laughs> that we have integrity? <laughs> that we're still young and in good shape? <laughs> yeah. And that we, we still have our play. ability to grow long hair? <laughs> Yeah, and I also think people think we, we used to hang out or like live together, or like hang out in like a Metallica compound or something, you know. We actually do vacation separately and things like that, shower separately, you know. See, back then when, when this whole haircut thing, it wasn't that we, we actually got it cut, it was it fell out, you know, which happens to most of us by the time you get as old as we are. Actually, we have really, really uh, high eyebrows and really low foreheads. <laughs> What are the best and worst things about being in a band like Metallica? I think the best thing about being in Metallica is freedom. Um, Metallica to me means freedom. Um, to do what you want to do musically, to experiment and to go all over the map and, and have fun with it. One of the best things is just, just, I mean, just point blank, the music. The music that we create and, and play together is just so, just so powerful. And so magical that so many things sprout from that, you know, so many endeavors and, and, and plans and visions and goals and inspirations and messages. I mean, you know, it's, I just have to say, just the, the you know, the capability th that we have to make music together and the music that we make is, is so strong. And I, 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 to me, I mean, that's the that's so powerful because from the music we make I mean so many good things come from it I mean it's too much to list about the worst thing about being in Metallica you're hard-pressed to find an answer because everything is, is is pretty cool there really is nothing to complain or whine about um and except jet lag uh, and hangovers well, you know <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing is uh I guess oh 9 a.m. Uh, in uh, Frankfurt waiting for your luggage people <laughs> You know, after no sleep, people are hounding you for pictures and autographs. You'll be eating your food and someone will come up and hit you up for an autograph. And sometimes they're pretty relentless, so, you know, can't we just eat, man? But, you know, I also find people that whine about, you know, when they're in successful rock bands, they just be slapped. Um, so we're trying not whine too much. I would say the hardest thing for me is just um, when we travel far away from the west coast of San Francisco is being away from my kids. Uh, and, and that... You know, but other than that, um, it's all pretty good. Uh, the band formed in L.A. and right around the glam era. And getting gigs was s somewhat difficult. Uh, well, we got a lot of gigs, but getting a following down there was tough because our music was pretty raw and we weren't into a big look or anything. Uh, and as soon as we played some shows up in San Francisco, uh, we, we traveled up there uh, Brian Slagle with Metal Blades Records was putting on concert or little small club gigs. You know, here's some metal bands from LA, here's some metal bands from Frisco, like swapping them, getting them, like traveling a bit. We knew right away that Frisco was the place for us. They were there for the music and not the look. Enter Sandman, Millstone or Milestone? Well, I, I would say milestone because I I never get sick of playing the song. I don't really particularly like rehearsing the song, but uh, it's great to have a song like that that everyone really identifies as your, you know, your freebird or your your uh, uh, paranoid, you know. So it's really cool to have the song that people know. Uh, well, they don't know we're gonna play it, but. We'll probably play it at the show. You, know? you go to like a Laker game or a sporting event, you know, and you're going to hear that song. It's it's similar to like with, you know, Queen, like We Will Rock You or something like that. It's such a classic song and you're going to hear it. And, and I'm sure that James and the boys are really proud of that because it takes a lot to achieve that. So more power to you. <laughs> well, how many times have I been injured? Well... There's lots of lots of scars. I'm covering a map with, up with tattoos, but uh, uh, wow. Well, let's see. On the Aussie tour, when we first had the Aussie tour uh, on puppets, uh, 
broke my wrist. Uh, and then, shoot, double compound fracture broke my arm before uh, the garage, uh, the garage days EP. Uh, injured my back on, uh, uh, let's see, it was uh, Summer Sanitarium, the first one, uh, with corn. Um, Kid Rock. That was jet, jet ski? Yeah, jet ski. Hammered my back. Uh, then the next summer sanitarium, I uh, broke three ribs at Kid Rock's uh, dirt bike track. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta stay away from that guy. <laughs> yeah, but you know, the show show went on every time. Uh, I only had to cancel a couple shows, you know, to get casts and to, uh, but we always made up shows. So we're, we're pretty, uh, pretty proud of keeping our uh, touring record uh, intact. An 18-year-old you offering yourself advice. Interesting. Uh, and you would listen to it? <laughs> but, well, exactly. I mean, for me, I, I think that uh, it's very important for young people to, to understand and learn about different cultures, maybe learn about different types of music, whether it's classical or whatever, I think that that's really important um, creatively, you know, it helps. And, you know, I like that some of these new young bands that are starting to come up now are really, really uh, getting into their instrument and it seems like they're practicing a lot and they're, they're getting it down and that, that's pretty inspiring. Yeah, I would say, uh, offer myself that no matter what's going on in my life, or how much struggle or pain is going on that uh, uh, I'm not the first one to feel that ever and you're, you know, uh, you're not alone. There's always some kind of uh, sanctuary or help for whatever you're going through. <laughs> um, so what, we, we, we were touring for pretty much straight through from, oh, from 03 to late 04 for about a year and a half and then uh, most of 05 um, we basically took off we just you know we've been going close to three years in a row with the making of the St. Anger record and so on so we needed some time to chill at home um, we uh, got offered to play with the Rolling Stones in San Francisco which was just so awesome because it's hometown and it's the Stones and it's, it's probably the only band that that we hadn't played with yet that we really wanted to that are part of the the, the big hero list and um, so we got together in, in November and played a couple shows with them and that kind of brought all of us back into Metallica mode again of playing and rehearsing and as soon as we were done with that we basically started uh, writing and prepping for the next record and that's what we've been doing the last six months you know, I, I would say based on the last 25 years of Metallica there's a, a, a fairly good chance that we'll go on a mammoth tour after um, after the next record comes out I mean We've certainly scaled it down a little bit, or at least um, in terms of the scheduling and try to pay more attention to being home with the kids and, and, and not being away for too long at a time. So the, the legs, as they are called, are a little shorter than they used to be. But, um, and I don't know if we're gonna play, you know, five shows in North Dakota like we did in, you know, we, up, up through the 80s and 90s. But, um, you know, it's pretty safe to say that, that we'll go out and play where, um, where our fans are and obviously we want to do that. Well, the new album, working with Rick Rubin, who has worked from, you know, he's done Slayer, Slipknot to Beast, Johnny Cash. Beastie, Beastie Boys, Boys, Neil Diamond. Diamond. Yeah. He's, he's done it all and he's got a, a really uh, a good track record. He's got a good attitude. So uh, something's going right. And uh, it was about time to, to try some new blood out in that area, you know. Bob Rock, uh, uh, an amazing uh, fifth member, you know, through a lot of our times and uh, almost knew us too well. Uh, we needed someone else to kind of give us some something else. Uh, but we're just writing, writing a lot. Rob's contributing a lot already and uh, feeling really good about what we've got. It's much more like all the early records where we're actually like, we have, you know, a separation between the writing process and the recording process. St. Anger was really an experiment in you know, not bringing any ideas in and basically just 
writing on the floor as we were recording it and kind of piecing things together and trying to maintain a, a kind of a, an impulse and a, a, a kind of a, a momentary dynamic, a spontaneity. And, um, and we really needed to try that because we felt we were so stuck with our, the, the other process. But now we've gotten that out of our system and we're kind of back to six months of writing songs and riff tapes and all that type of stuff, which we did on the first nine or 10 records. And um, the stuff is, is heavy, it's aggressive, it's, um, it's probably a little more um, uh, melodic than the St. Anger stuff and a little more uh, varied. Um, where St. Anger was really just about pummeling, <laughs> was really just about pummeling and, and kind of beating the listener up with the intensity of the music. This is, uh, has a little broader range to it. For me, I know that the music uh, just kind of fuels me up. There's a lot of adrenaline that kind of kicks in, a lot of dynamics too. Um, I know that lately we've been uh, really fine-tuning a lot of our songs for live and that makes it that much more exciting, that much more comfortable. So we're really excited about what we're going to be doing um, you know, coming up here with these next uh, batch of shows we're going to be doing. But for me it's just like an injection of pure energy and it, it kind of takes you to a different place and you really kind of find yourself stepping up and that's the great thing about Metallica's music. and being able to perform that stuff live. It's a rush. Playing live has always been the reason there is a Metallica, you know. Uh, we, we, didn't, we didn't want to have regular jobs. This was going to be our job. Uh, writing some songs is great, but going and playing live, that's how we built our fan base. That's how we, you know, built up our chops. That's how we bonded. That's how we gained our fan base. Uh, and really playing live is just uh, us... Uh, experiencing the music right there you know and I think the great thing about playing live is being in the moment and being completely screw something up it's not the end of the world you're up there you're alive things are okay <laughs>